Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ruby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing my season review for Parramatta and their 2023 NRL season. This year there were a bit of expectation from fans and the experts that Parramatta would once again meet the finals. But there were a few people out there that predicted that Parramatta would drop off after the grand final appearance from last year and with the release of a few key players, people saw them missing out. There were also a bit of talk about the recruitment the club did during the off-season, with some describing it as a bit lacklustre, with the only exciting addition for most people being Jermaine Hopgood from Penrith. Looking at the draw as well, it was going to be a tough opening to the season for Parramatta with them having to play in Melbourne, Cronulla, Sydney Roosters and Penrith all within the first five week, and the fact that the club was one of the last teams to receive a bag coming all the way in round 14. We also seem to, in the early rounds, have to play a team coming off the bye. Before the season began, I had two thoughts in my mind. At best, we would finish between 5th to 8th, and the worst possible finish for the club would be around 12th. And to start the year off, it got a weird of the worst possible start with us losing our first three matches in a row, all by four points. The opening game against Melbourne, by all rights, we should have really won that match, but poor game management cost us, along with a bit of bad luck. Moses had a drop goal which literally touched the pinky of Tyran Wishart from Melbourne and it deflected the ball away from the uprights as it was 100% going over. The round two match against Cronulla is another game we should have won but a costly sin bin and then some more poor goal kicking meant that we came up short. Even the game against Manly, there were some daft things in that game which cost us and also poor goal kicking. In round four, we pulled off one of the upsets of the year, defeating back-to-back -back Premier's Penrith, but we nearly threw that game away as well. By round 11, we had won four games and lost seven. In between that, we defeated Canterbury and West Tigers, but all our seven losses were by 10 points or less. So we were in games, but poor discipline, silly mistakes really cost us in those losses. Then going into round 12, I thought this could have been one of the turning points of the year for us. We played against South Sydney at the new SFS and we were given no chance by the media and opposition fans. A lot of people said we would lose 13 plus. It was also either Indigenous round or there was some milestone happening for either Latrell Mitchell or Cody Walker. And in like years gone by, where we have been rode off and given no hope, we came out and we played like Premiers. We battered South Sydney all over the pitch and we won 36 points to 16. This was followed by four wins in a row, including the bye which saw the club catapult all the way in the, just outside the top four places. In the match against Redcliffe, we set a new club record for the most points scored in the first half of the game since our foundation in 1947. We scored 42 points in that first half. Following on from the Redcliffe game, we had a bye, and when the club returned, I don't know what happened in the week off, but they were almost like an alien team out there from what I saw. To finish the year, we only managed to record three wins from a possible eight games. The defensive resilience, the attack, everything that we had before the bye just seemed to go out the window. Our season was officially over in round 24 against Brisbane at the Gabba when we conceded 50 points in a game and I'm pretty sure you all know what that means. In classic Parramatta form though, like the South Sydney game, we played against Penrith where we were meant to be the sacrificial lambs for them to get the minor premiership but we put in another performance which left all Parramatta fans confused and bewildered. We defeated Penrith quite comfortably, 32 points to 18, with Mike Asivo playing like he did back in 2019, scoring four tries. So we ended up finishing the year in 10th place, two points outside the top eight with the positive for and against. One word to sum that up is frustrating. Just one win outside the top eight. Those two points would have actually put us in 7th with Sydney Roosters finishing in 8th because Canberra had a shocking for and against. There has been a big song and dance in the media and by opposition fans going, I can't believe Parramatta made a grand final but weren't in the finals the next year. Like it's the first time in the NRL this has ever occurred. There have been teams that have actually won the Premiership, like Canterbury in 2004, West Tigers in 2005, that didn't even make the finals the next year, but nobody seems to mention that. I think what really hurt the club this year was besides the addition of Hopgood, the recruitment was very poor this year. The likes of Mumasiga, Merchie and Hodgson didn't work out. 
I wasn't surprised with Hodgson retiring as I knew that he was one bad tackle or one bad injury away from it. I was surprised that he even lasted the, the entire year or even lasted a few games considering that the injury toll that he's had in his career. You also had the Ryan Madison situation before the season. A lot of people have been critical of it and I think he really should have just paid the fan. He's on 600, 700k a year. What's 4,000 quid to someone on that type of money? It's milk money. I think the decision by Madison showed where the mentality of some of the players is in this, in this squad. I don't agree with Ray Hadley saying we've got a poor culture and that's why we don't win premierships. Because look at the likes of Sydney Roosters in Canterbury. They've had their fair share of bad boys and they still won premierships so it's got now to do with that I think. I know it's not the entire reason for the club failing this year but there was also some key injuries to key players throughout the year and suspensions. We didn't have Sean Lane for large parts of the season. Campbell Gillard was also injured. We were a bit light on the backs. There was also a few players selected for State of Origin as well. Then the Dylan Brown scenario didn't help one bit either. Having one of your key players out for weeks on end really hurt the team. He really let the team down this year with his off-field antics. I think even if we had made the finals this year, we would have been knocked out probably in week one, especially with Clint Gutherson. In that final game against Penrith, he was basically playing on one leg and there was a lot better teams this year. Clint Gutherson so important with how the team plays and I think even if we did make it with him in there, we would have been knocked out week one. The season was a disappointment and it was very frustrating, mainly due to all the close losses we had. But the most disappointing loss for me was in the round 22 game against Melbourne at Docklands. Before the game, their club chose to celebrate the 25 year anniversary of their team against us and paraded their trophies in front of their fans, including the 2007 and 2009 premierships. Now they could have done this against any other team that wasn't involved during that period, but they specifically chose us as a way to rub our noses in it. I was fully expecting our team to come out firing, but we offered absolutely naught and they took the piss out of us. For me, that was the worst loss of the year. I know we conceded 50 points against Brisbane, but when a team puts on annex like that pre-game, you have to show some at anything and we showed absolutely naught. Obviously, I think our three best performances of the year were the two games against Penrith and the match against South Sydney. Where are these performances throughout the entire year? Why do they only happen in these games where we are given no chance? I will never know. As for next year, if you watch the Cumberland throw, they paint a very bleak picture when it comes to the roster, with apparently only three to four available spots left for 2024. I've spoken with many Parramatta fans and they all say the same thing. We need some speed, we need some flair in the backs. At the moment, we are very light in that area and the options we have are not the best. When it comes to the forwards, the club has plenty of forwards. We don't need any more forwards. Hopefully the club can offload a bit of Deadwood in the off season and Wonga Blake, who's on 600 grand a year, can you believe that? And spend the money on a decent outside back. I'm also a bit concerned about the hook and roll. I know Brendan Hans did a decent job this year, but then you've got Joey Lus Lusick sort of in the, in the background. I support St Ellens and he did a great job for us in the Super League. However, Super League is not as good as the NRL and um, I think we could really do with another decent hooking option in that position. If I were to select my best player for the year or the best players, I think definitely Clint Gutherson, although he's got a lot of critics out there. Where would, where would we be without Clint Gutherson? Honestly, he does so much work, he saves a lot of tries, he's in everything. Also, I was really impressed with Hopgood in his debut season for us. Very good, he's a machine. I thought that Hans did okay considering the situation that he was thrown into. Um, Cartwright had a good season, one of his best seasons for a long time. But besides that, I don't think that there was too many standout players. I, I think a lot of the squad did not have their best seasons as players and injuries and consistency played a big thing in that. There's also been a lot of talk about Brad Arthur and his position as head coach. With Brad Arthur, he's contracted to 2025. I think that the club are going to keep him until 2025. There's a lot of people that see sack him, get shot of him, but then you ask who are we going to replace him with? And a lot of people don't really seem to have a concrete answer in that regard. So I think 
for better or for worse, we're stuck with Brad Arthur till 2025. As for next year, I mean, it's Parramatta after all. This season was a disappointment, very frustrating. We've had seasons like this before where we think the future's going to be bleak. It's not looking good. I remember 2018, the end of that, I went, well, who knows what's going to happen in 2019? And then we ended up coming fifth and we played some really good rugby that year. Who knows? Uh, 2024, we're going to have still the bulk of the squad there. I mean, we only missed out by two points, two lousy points. That's all we missed out by this year. So we weren't like we weren't 10 to 12 points off making the top eight. So for 2024, anything can happen. I definitely think that we can make finals next year, but we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, I'm not going to make this review a very long one because we all know how Parramatta went this year, but I thought I'd just give my thoughts on how the season went, give me thoughts on some of the games and just talk about a few things. So that's been reviewed for season 2023. Very disappointing. But once again, we'll be back there in season 2024. And if we're going to take at least one positive out of this year, it's the fact that we beat Canary Bankstown twice. We did the double over them this year, beat our arch rivals in both games, and we finished higher than them on the table. So even though it were a shite season, that's something that we can hold our heads up by. We beat them twice, they didn't beat us, and that's all that matters. So where do you see Parramatta coming in 2024? I'd be interested to know. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know where do you think that the club went wrong this year? Was it injuries? Was it the Dylan Brown scenario? Was it just that the club just wasn't playing well this year? You let me know in the comment section below. I'll be doing more videos soon. And of course, in the off season, I'm always doing videos. So thanks once again, everyone, for tuning in for this Paramount 2023 season review. And I'll catch us all later in the next one. All right, tell you bye for now.